never have I, nor will I, criticize your service. And we appreciate uh, your service to this country and the integrity. So I'm going to focus on the things that you said, not the conclusion that you drew. And uh, uh, Congressman Trey Gowdy and I talked a little bit about this, but on February 4, 2016, uh, Secretary Clinton, during a presidential debate, said, I never sent or received any classified material. They are retroactively classifying it, close quote. And so in your statement on July 5th, you said that uh, there were indeed 110 emails, 52 email chains, which uh, there was classified information on it at the time it was sent or received. So those two statements, uh, both of them cannot be true. Is that correct? Your statement and her statement. Yeah, it's, it's not accurate to say that she did not send or receive classified. So she did not tell the truth during that presidential debate that she never sent or received classified information and it was retroactively classified. Yeah, I don't think that's a question I should be answering what was in well, her Well, during... either your statement's not true or hers is not true. Both of them cannot be true. So what, is your statement true? That I can speak to. My okay, statement your is statement is true. So the American people will have to judge with her statement not being true. So let me go on to another one. Uh, on October 22nd, she said there was nothing marked classified on emails either sent or received. And in your statement, you said a sm very small number of emails contain classified information, more markings indicating the presence of classified information at the time. So she makes a statement that says there was no markings. You make a statement that there was, so her statement was not true. That, that one actually have a little bit of insight into, into uh, her statement because we asked her about that. There were three documents that bore portion markings where you're obligated when something is classified to put a marking on that paragraph. Right. And there were three that bore C in parens, which means that's confidential classified information. So a reasonable person who has been a senator, a secretary of state, a first lady, wouldn't a reasonable person know that that was a classified marking as a secretary of state? Yeah. A reasonable person. That's all I'm asking. Yeah, before this investigation, I probably would have said yes. I'm not so sure. I, I, I don't find it incredible. Director, she... tell me. Come on. I, I, I mean, I've only been here a few years, and I understand the importance of those markings. So you're, you're suggesting that a long length of time that she had no idea what a classified marking would be? That's your sworn testimony today? No, no. Not, not that she would have no idea what a classified marking would be, but... but it's an interesting question as to whether she, this question about sophistication came up earlier, whether she was actually sophisticated enough to understand what a C in parens means. So you're not saying this former Secretary of State is not sophisticated enough to understand a classified marking? No, that's not what that, I'm that's saying. That's a huge statement. I know what I'm saying. You asked me, did I assume that someone would know? Probably before this investigation, I would have. I'm not so sure of that answer any longer. I think it's possible, possible. Uh, that she didn't understand what a C meant in, when she saw it in the body of an email like that. It's possible. Af after years in the Senate and Secretary of State, I mean, that's hard for me and the American people to believe, Director Comey, and I, I'm, I'm, I'm not questioning your, your analysis of it, but wouldn't a reasonable person think that someone who has the highest job of handling classified information understand that? I think that's a conclusion a reasonable person would draw. It may not be accurate, but so, that's what so I'm in that, to say. let me let me go a little bit further, because that last quote actually came on October twenty second, two thousand fifteen, under sworn testimony before the Benghazi committee. So if she gave sworn testimony that a reasonable person would suggest was not truthful, isn't it a logical assumption that she may have misled? Congress, and we need to look at that further. Well, the reasonable person test is not what you look at for perjury or false statements. But like I said, I can understand why people would ask that question. All right. So, so let me, in the last little portion of this, in your three and a half hour interview on Saturday, did she contradict some of these public statements in private? Because you said she didn't lie to the FBI. But it's apparent that she lied to the American people. So did she change her statements in that sworn testimony with you last Saturday? 
I haven't gone through that to parse that. I, I have can, you, can you do that and get back to this committee? Because it's important, I think, to the American people and to transparency. Oh, I'm sure. And as, as the chairman and I have talked about, I'm sure the, the committee is going to want to see the documents in our investigation and whatnot, and we'll work to give you whatever we can possibly give you under our law. But I haven't done that analysis at this point. But will you and, get and that back to us? General, 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 time has, uh, has expired. And, uh,